What's good? <sighs> Back with another roundup of a bunch of stuff that came out in June. It, like I, 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 I fell behind, and so I just have to do this little quick catch up um, here of a bunch of the new projects that came out um, that I just haven't gotten the chance to talk to you guys about. Um, so let's just hop into it. Um, first project I want to talk to you guys about is the Alchemist and uh, Freddie Gibbs collab project. And oh boy, if you already know yourself about Freddie Gibbs, you already know it's like that raw, street, smart, uh, witty, like bars, just, just all all throughout. Like like this is the this is the type of like I don't get into a lot of like gangster music like that much um but like the way like to me i kind of view freddie gibbs like along the lines of like a pusha t like like pusha will give you like the the, the street savvy drug dealer talk junk and and give you that little spice of like extravagance and flow and punch lines that just makes you go like yeah so um, same thing with Freddie Gibbs. Same kind of like demeanor. Flow is flow is different, of course, but when it comes to wit, the the, the street smartness of it, the the uh, unabashedness of feeling like of calling out people who uh, are faking it and just do the whole music thing and and like that and that's it and fake the funk. Um, when it comes to the street stuff, like he he does that junk and like pair that rhyme style with the dirtiness of, of Alchemist beats, like oh my gosh, it's it like the, all the way through is really dope. And with like also the like the the Griselda features he has on here. Um, like on Frank Lucas uh, with Benny the Butcher and then the Babies and Fools with Conway. Then even even what's on something to rap about, um, Tyler the Creator's uh, contribution is really dope as well. It, it's, it's just great stuff. Um, favorite tracks for me though, um, it, ha it, it might, I might have to say it's Scotty Bean. Like, I really, really, really enjoy that track, but, um, but God is Perfect is also like a really dope track as well. But very, very, very standout project if you dig some raw hip hop with some street stuff on top, you know. Um, now the next project I want to bring up is Run the Jewels RTJ4. All right, more raw hip hop stuff with like really really brash in your face uh braggadocio dope punch lines and also a, a, a good heaping scoop of social consciousness in there like this project was amazing um and the only thing that i find so so strange is how on a couple of these songs on some of the actual you know um more um more politically uh you know the social commentary stuff um how appropriate some of the the talk was about being choked out and stuff like that and how that lined up with them um releasing it early after the the George Floyd uh, murder. Um, it, it's just like they were talking about about police brutality and and unjust killing of black people, um, just like as if they recorded it right after that happened. But we know that they've been working on this project for quite some time. So the fact that it's still relevant and, you know, we've seen these things happen in the past and it's still, it is so timely when it came out is, is just mind baffling. Um, and the way they attack it is, is always gonna just make you be like, yeah, junk is messed up. <laughs> um, but they they don't just 
go into it with just the the social commentary that that um, you know Killer Mike is known for, and even some of the the later Run the Jewels content is known for as well. But um, but they also um, jump into talk about religion and stuff like that, um, and uh, and then just getting your face showing that they two two of the best. Uh, rappers to ever rap on the same track together that LP produced or co-produced. Um, I think this is the first time that there's been co-producers um, on uh, a Run the Jewels project, which was very interesting, but it still has a very, very distinct Run the Jewels uh, sound to it. And and um, they even had some pretty good features on here as well. Um, that like with with Pharrell and Zach De La Roca on just I was like yo this is this is dope um, so um, one and even two changes uh, two chains um, contribution was really nice as well like I always knew two chains could like could rap rap and not always just be be you know goofy um, for the sake of goofy sake uh, um, but yeah, he comes in and he's 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 just dripping in charisma as always. Um, but yeah, um, but yeah, some of the 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 highlights for me, the single "Ooh La La" is just ugh, magnificent. Um, I was gonna say "Très Magnifique." Um, just is also like another one of my favorites. Um, a few words for the firing squad is just an excellent closer um, and yeah like it's just full of really really dope dope uh, bars um, throughout the whole thing um, yeah so next project I want to end up talking to you guys about is gonna be the Chloe and Hallie project um, uh, ungodly hour um, this one um, was my first time finally listening to them um, a bit. It was recommended checking them out um, after um, asking about one of their songs being played in uh, my store because um, Do It plays in, in Hollister currently and they're like, oh you haven't checked out the new Chloe and Halle project you need to do, it is great. And I'm like, alright, I'll give it a chance and I gotta agree. Their vocals are really good. They have a very solid grasp of what what sounds good in the R&B uh, scene these days, um, but they also make a couple of dabbles in pop, uh, a more poppy sound um, that like I think is like only on two tracks. I can't um, I can't specifically pin them down off the top of my head right now, but um, they 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 were the only two that I felt were like. Uh, they did feel a little out of place when it came to uh, the sequencing of everything. Um, they didn't seem to quite fit uh, in there well. But but throughout here, there are a lot of really great tracks. Um, like "Forgive Me" is an excellent opener. You know, I know there's the intro, but you know, "Forgive Me" it, it might as like the intro and "Forgive Me" might as well be one track because they flow together so seamlessly. Um, and Do It is also really, really good. Um, Busy Boy was a nice track as well. Um, and uh, the rest of, rest of Your Life um, is a, a nice closer for the project as well. Um, now, um, let's stick to the R&B stuff. Let's check out, uh, talk about Tiana Taylor's The Album. Um, now, The Album could have been shortened. That's, that's basically my take. Um, uh, I, I watched even a review from The Needle Drop uh, and uh, Anthony Fantano just mentioned how this is very much a mixed bag and I have to agree. Um, I do think I probably liked a little bit more of this project than he did. Um, yet, there are definitely a lot of songs in here that I don't think were absolutely necessary to have in the project and some of them ended up seeming just a little too short as well but but Tiana um, had some excellent production 
throughout this project um, and and she even flipped the anxious beat that, that I thought was pretty cool um, and and she got to be playful she got to be strong she got to be loving she showed like everything through this project but I still feel she could have showed everything with a little less tracks um, some of the the standouts that I can remember uh, off the top of my head um, uh, come, come back to me was a, a great start um, after the intro of I guess the birth of Junie um, also wake up love low-key it all started up very very strong 1-800-1-Night uh, night was was a fun little track so I did enjoy that one um, bear with me was really great concrete I really enjoyed still was just moving um, and and yeah those those will be be the main ones I want to throw out um, there that I, I really enjoyed um, now um, let, let me eh, I'll still keep it on I'll, on the the R&B side um, we got Umi um, now Umi is an artist that I decided to go ahead and check out the new project of because I watched her in the uh, Asia rising uh, for forever live stream thing and when I was watching that I was like oh she's like performing one of one of the songs that plays at work she's got a pretty cool style she's like reminiscent of a, a Janae Aiko um, and then like in that live stream she mentioned how she was in, she also inspired by Janae Aiko how they're both uh, have uh, have um, Japanese uh, heritage and and uh, they enjoy doing the R&B stuff, and their vibes are very similar. Um, and um, and basically, that's 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 what I can say of the project. It's a very similar vibe to like a Jane Aiko. Um, this one has she she even decides to throw in a bit about uh, chakras and such throughout here. And I'm not all into all of that kind of stuff but it does still sound nice i just feel that some of the tracks are well pretty much all these tracks are a little little short um wish they could be a little bit longer but they they uh, do what they need to do at bringing the vibe and allowing you to hit replay if you need it um so yeah um next uh, let you know about uh black's six piece hot EP um, and um, uh, in short not all of them were hot um, now black is an artist that I feel like I enjoy his features a lot but whenever I decide to like check out his own projects it doesn't leave me wanting more but I still keep returning back to it just in case he gets better at making like a solid project like to me he's like hit and miss so like the ATL freestyle was pretty cool um, long nights was nice um, and elephant in the room was cool the concept of outside was nice but I just didn't like the execution um, and then like float and know my rights with little baby I could have definitely done without it um, and then the last thing I want to mention is going to be um, the two um, EPs from Lil Wayne which I while listening discovered oh some of these songs are on that funeral album and then I find out like when I like when I go to double check that it was on the funeral album I find out oh there's a funeral deluxe album and these are just all the songs I didn't hear before are just the extra songs that were added to the deluxe version of Funeral. Like, why did he re-release these in two separate EPs? My only guess is to try and manipulate, you know, streaming um, to get the streaming numbers up. Um, having it part of different th these few different projects that way they can uh, continue to have it have the news like it like. Let me let me just 
start over with my explanation. So basically, um, what you would do is you'd put out the smaller projects and so that pops up, hey, new music. You go and listen to it and then those streams, since it's also part of another project, would be able to count towards the other project that it's on and it would allow you to basically inflate the numbers for that other project as well as the new one and um, then you can end up getting the accolades or whatever that you need for your main body of work um, which is kind of like the method that um, Strange Music is doing currently just but in reverse um, where they'll do the EPs and then they'll finally drop the album that way all the previous things can count towards the main release um, and they can end up getting their plaques from the RIAA um, but yeah but this time Lil Wayne kind of had it in reverse uh, but I never listened to the deluxe version of Funeral um, and so this is my first time hearing a couple of those new tracks and um, to be honest, I didn't really enjoy, uh, like the, I didn't really enjoy any of, the, any of the newer tracks that weren't already there other than, um, other than Shimmy with Doja Cat. I dug that. That was a really fun vibe. Everything else was just kind of like, oh, I've heard this before and it, it was either I liked it or I didn't but I already knew that I liked it or didn't so like platform was kind of fun but um, after hearing it after shimmy it's just like oh it's it's a lot better to I like the vibe of shimmy it's kind of like make them dance uh, track than the platform make them dance track it, it just it, it just felt like a, a pandering this time um, to you know the bounce sound that's popular in New Orleans that you know Lil Wayne also helped popularize worldwide um, then I do it um, just like before was not really impressive to me ball hard like before wasn't impressive to me um, multiple flows was new that one has Lil Uzi Vert on it and I was just like mm -hmm. I'm not really into Lil Uzi on here Wayne's got a couple of good lines on here, but that's about it. Um, but I got another uh, dose of love for Mahogany. The way he flows on that junk is amazing. Um, Russian Roulette was just like, that was okay. Um, it was nice to hear it hit uh, Lil Wayne with the Griselda dudes, but it still felt a little uh, disjointed in my opinion. Um, and then Mamma Mia was another one I was just like, it's there's good parts and there's bad parts. And so you just kind of either got to take it as it is or um, or just do without. But yeah, so that's my thoughts on both the Wheezy Flow and the we what uh, Wheezy Workout. Um, so yeah. But um, finally caught up, got you my quick thoughts on these projects, and uh, yeah, um, if any of those sounded cool to you, um, go check them out. If you have already checked it out and have some thoughts on my opinions, drop them down below. I'd love to read them. I'll try to respond. Um, and yeah, that's it. Much love, peace, peace.